Are we live? Okay, can we just have the camera backwards live? I was gonna make a big joke about this, but then I started talking, so my joke is ruined. This table is not is designated for silence. <laughs> People always point this out because this sign is often sitting over here at the bar, right here, the fruits bar. And I'm always over here yakking and people are always like, um, you're not paying attention to the sign. I'm like, I own the sign. Hi guys. Good afternoon. As per usual, I'm going to call up the old Rhythmia Facebook page on my laptop, which is super low for some reason. Let's pick it up here. How is everybody doing this sunny Sunday? Sunny Sunday in Costa Rica. Again, I, we were just having a conversation behind the scenes before we got going here about how funny the weather has been. It is. It should be a little bit more rainy this time of year than it has been, but we've been blessed with a lot of beautiful sunshine. There we are. Let me get us turn my mute on. There we go. We're talking oodles of noodles, my friends. Oh, and what do I have in my hand? Two books. We haven't talked about these in a while. <laughs> so first of all, let's talk about Shit the Moon Said. If you haven't already picked up your copy of Jerry's book, do it. It's available on Amazon. It's super great if you don't know anything about the Rhythmia story, why we're here doing what we're doing, and um, Rhythmia, uh, sorry, Jerry's story. This is a great book to pick up to get a little insight in all, to all of those things. It's available on, available on Amazon as well as here in the gift shop. And you might as well get a bundle deal while you're at it and pick up Rhythmia's Miracle Meals. This is a collection of recipes chosen by yours truly as of May of last year, May of 2017. These were a collection of the most requested recipes with a little foreword by Jerry. Such love from him. Who's that? Is that pretty lady? <laughs> I'm so tired. I've been talking all day. If you're friends with me on Facebook, you'll see I posted today like this funny little um, text shareable on, on the Instagram and the Facebook. It says, retired. I was tired yesterday and I'm tired again today. Because I've been really tired lately. I had like, if you've been watching along for the last couple of months, I probably have been, I need to stop complaining about how little sleep I'm getting. Insomnia is a bitch. Um, what was I, why did I, why am I talking about how tired I am? It doesn't matter. But we're talking about oodles of noodle, oodles of noodles here today on, on, on the Facebook and I'm just checking through my book to see did I have any pasta I didn't put any pasta recipes oh I put a pad thai sauce in this cookbook which I don't actually serve here at Rhythmia but it's been one a popular one um, with many of my clients so I've got a pad thai sauce that is raw vegan based with cashews available here in the cookbook um, and today we're gonna talk about a few we're gonna be talking oodles of noodles we're gonna talk about different types of pasta and we're gonna make a few sauces um, for your pasta repertoire and this is kind of reminiscent of my my passion for things Italian because I did go to Rome early this year and I have I think a couple of weeks ago we did a Italian Italiano inspired by Italiano uh, Facebook live let's see who's watching shall we Cavallo saying hello a Senna saying hello Mirka saying hi from Finland Claudia's watching hey sweetie Denise is saying hey chef Meg Christina O'Connell is watching from Cornwall Ontario We've got a bunch of other people. Jane is watching. Jason's watching. So beautiful to see you guys all here. Please let me know um, where you're watching from. Marina McKenzie's watching from Smoky Kelowna. Oh, I know. There's a lot of fires going on in many places of the world right now. Um, so I'm going to send. I'm sending out lots of love and healing light to to Mother Nature up in all those parts of the world that are burning. Sending a lot of our fresh, beautiful, clean Costa Rican air up to you guys. Patty saying hi. Hey, Patty. I miss you too. So lovely to to see you online here. Um, oh God, have I shown you guys this shirt? So if you remember, was it last week that I was wearing my watermelon shirt? Do you remember, Kenneth? Yep. And I pointed out that from now on, I'm gonna start wearing like clothes with food on them. I didn't even realize until just this moment <laughs> that I wore this shirt. One of the staff this morning, cause I, well, I wore this to come in and teach yoga this morning. I taught yoga at 7 a.m. this morning. And one of the front, the reception staff, they're like, you look like a walking smoothie ingredient list, which is true. So I thought this shirt was super fun. I picked it up mainly because I teach yoga. Normally every Sunday afternoon I teach yoga here and this is my, I always make a joke. Like I'm up there teaching yoga before dinner so I don't know who's cooking dinner. And this is my homage to being a, a chef and a yoga teacher wearing my fruit shirt. So what shall I wear next week? I'll have to buy something. I don't think I have any other, any other pieces of clothing with fruit or vegetables on them at this point. So I'm gonna have to go shopping. 
Jace Hurston is watching from Colombia. Super, super cool. So oodles of noodles. I'm gonna tell you, I've been standing out here for about two hours. <laughs> Literally like, I gotta get ready, I gotta get ready, I gotta get ready. I'm just really tired. Um, I think the heat's getting to me a little bit. And we're gonna do, how many recipes? We're gonna do three different sauce recipes. I'm gonna talk about several things. So we're, let's, let's get into it, shall we? Yes, let's get into it. So, different kinds of pasta. We here at Rhythmia, um, I'm, I'm making the shift to being 100% gluten-free, which I'm super excited about. Um, all of our pasta has typically always been gluten-free. We use a combination of whether we use like Pad Thai style rice noodles on the buffet, um, buckwheat noodles, or a new favorite of mine is a gluten-free quinoa noodle. So Kenneth, if you want to show them the bowl of the plate of pasta that we've got down there on the, on the table, this is our gluten-free quinoa pasta that all I've gone and done is um, dressed it with our um, mixed Italian ratatouille. So super simple recipe. This is just eggplant, zucchini, red onion, tomatoes, and mushrooms that are cooked down with some garlic and onion um, and some tomato puree, salt and pepper. You can add in some fresh thyme and rosemary, whatever kind of Italian inspired herbs you want. A little bit of um, herb de Provence is always really nice and a little drizzle of balsamic. And this is one of my favorite dishes in the world. I used to actually make this all the time and eat the ratatouille without any sort of pasta. I would just dip a bread in it, which is also a really good way to do it. But that is a gluten-free quinoa pasta. And as you can see, it looks very, it looked very similar to just regular old spaghetti. And a lot of people can't really taste, tell the difference as far as texture goes, as long as you cook that to a nice al dente. It does have a bit more of a bitter taste. I find anything quinoa does have a bit more of a bitter taste, but um, that's a really, really, really great alternative. Uh, the quinoa pasta, it's also a great source of plant-based protein if you're following a plant-based diet. So I wanted to just talk about that real quick. I'm gonna talk about a few other kinds of pasta here really, really quickly before we get into the recipes as well. So here I've got, in this first little compartment here, regular old processed white flour pasta which is perfectly fine in a balanced diet, if you ask me, especially when they come in little animal shapes like elephants. Like, look at this, so we got an elephant. Uh, oh, sorry, I've got some eggplant fur under my, eggplant fur? Eggplant fur under my fingernails. Little turtles, little giraffes. So I was funny, I got this out in the kitchen um, and the guys, the, the grown men were giggling. They're like, oh, they're, they're your pasta shaped like animals. I'm like, yeah, it makes, it's put a, it puts a smile on your face. So we're gonna do a recipe with that a little bit later. It's gonna be reminiscent of your childhood, probably if you ate a certain um, zoo themed tomato sauce canned treat like I did as a child that I absolutely adore. We're gonna make a healthier version of that. In the middle here, I've got um, red lentil pasta, which is something that's just recently become widely available here in Costa Rica. Many of my favorite shops are selling it. I really like it because I like the texture and I like that it is another great source of plant-based protein. And I wanna show you, this is what it looks like cooked up. So it plumps up real nice. The texture is super chewy and I love it with fresh pesto on it or any sort of, whatever your favorite dressing is. I even like to do it with just a little bit of ghee and salt and pepper or even done in like a coconut milk and peanut butter sauce, like making a bit of a Thai dressing. I would love this pasta for, in you know, any different way. And it is a nice complete protein. So that's a really great option there. So that's the, the red lentil pasta. It looks a lot prettier before it's cooked. It loses a lot of its red as you saw when it, when it is cooked and as it absorbs the water. And this is the last thing I wanted to point out here real quick is couscous. A lot of people get confused and when they see couscous, they assume that it is a grain, but it is in fact a pasta. So if you're gluten-free, quinoa, great small grain option that's gluten-free and great and also, like I mentioned, a good source of plant-based protein, but couscous is actually just really, really small pasta. But the beautiful thing about couscous is have, if, you, if you don't actually have a problem with gluten, which a lot of us actually don't, we just have taken on, taken on the idea that we do, um, because it was huge in the news with several books that were published in the last decade. Um, I have no problem with it. So I enjoy couscous every once in a while, and it's super easy to cook because it is such a small grain. All you need to do is boil, pour boiling water on it, even just straight out of your kettle, put it in a bowl and let it sit, and it will just absorb the water and cook almost instantaneously. So it's a really great grain to have for last minute suppers and whatnot. So those are three pastas that we're talking about right now. Um, and we're gonna utilize uh, a couple of them in recipes, but, because I like doing raw, vegan, plant-based stuff, we're gonna talk about the other option for pasta, which is making our own out of vegetables. Oh, there's one other. So the buckwheat that I mentioned, this is just 
um, buckwheat pasta. Be careful when you, if you're buying buckwheat, because buckwheat, counter, counterintuitively, is actually a gluten-free grain, buckwheat in its whole form. But lots of soba noodles, like this one, in, in, for example, contains organic wheat flour and organic buckwheat flour and sea salt. So you gotta be really, really careful, because a lot of these pastas are 100% buckwheat, therefore gluten-free, but quite often they do um, do like a 50-50 or other percentage split of regular regular wheat flour and buckwheat So just be very very careful buckwheat is gluten-free, but not when combined with regular wheat So that's a really great option especially when you're doing like Japanese soba dishes I like to use this with peanut sauces and mixed vegetables and things like that as well. So just keep that in mind Anything going on over here that I need to check in on six new comments da -da -da -da. Jessica Marie is saying blueberry for my neck, oh, for the neck, for your next shirt. <laughs> Jill, Gil, sorry, Gil is watching from Orlando. Can't wait to join you guys in January, February. Awesome! I love seeing people that are what, tuning in that are coming. Pasta says, I had a pasta dish there and it was amazing. I don't know what it was. Was it what, Patty, was it maybe just pasta with garlic and kale? Because that's a dish we do and it flies off the buffet. It's just, I mean, I think we do it usually on Thursday. So after our guests have spent four nights in the medicine and they're, you know, just feeling really wanting to ground down, we serve pasta with quinoa chicken meatballs. So we do the quinoa chicken meatballs in a pomodoro sauce, separate from the pasta. And all the pasta is, is cooked quinoa pasta or rice pasta with sauteed garlic, olive oil, sea salt, and kale. And it flies, right? We, how many, we, we go through what, like four shapings, mm -hmm. like four big shaping dishes of, of that pasta, minimum, every time people just, they eat it right up. Leslie Daly saying hello from North Carolina. Cheryl's saying hello. Renata is Blackmore saying lots of love from London. Oh my God, we got people watching from all over the place. I, there's a certain woman named Ingrid joining us. Ingrid, were you working? Was Ingrid working this morning? No. Yes. Ingrid, what are you doing? Are you, you can't get enough of Rhythmia. Ingrid was working with us. So she's one of our amazing servers at Roots here at the restaurant. She's gone home and she's tuning in now because she just can't get enough. Everyone here loves working here so much. They want to tune in when they're not even here. Okay, back to the pasta. So this is a spiralizing machine, and I think I've talked about it several times. I know I did it way back. I think my very first Facebook Live was a Thai food one, wasn't it? We did the Thai spring rolls and the pad. We did that pad Thai recipe that I just mentioned. We did that recipe live, I believe, back on, it was like around the first week of October, which was when we started doing these Facebook Lives. So it's been almost a year. And we were just talking, I was talking with one of our other staff members. He asked me how many times, how many of these videos I, I've been doing. And I said, well, rewind almost a year, every single week. Maybe I've taken six Sundays off, whether through travel, vacation, or illness. So we've done like 45 of these videos. And I'm surprised I'm not running out of ideas just yet. But I almost am. So if you have any ideas of what you want to see, let me know. Put it in the comments, because I am kind of running out of ideas. But that being said, I only have this week and next week, and then we're taking a month-long sabbatical, I believe, because we're working as closing. Back to the noodles. Wouldn't you know it? So I have talked about the spiralizer in the past. This is something that I brought down with me from, from Canada. I always have one of these in my kitchen at home. Um, I'm gonna pick up a few more of these when I go to Canada later on, or maybe they're probably selling these in San Jose here in Costa Rica by now in one of the big kitchen supply stores. But this one is, we've kind of MacGyvered it a little bit. Normally we have, there's a handle here that you turn to help turn the vegetables. And I'll show you how this works real quick here, just with a sample of this. I'm gonna just give this a quick little peel. Six new messages again. You guys are on fire. Let's see what they have to, what people have to say since I'm over here. Carrot is peeled. La 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 la. Melody saying hello from the UK. Linda says she. Sorry, I'm holding the carrot in front of my face. Linda saying she loves spiralizing vegetables. Linda is saying an idea, wild foods. That's a good idea. I was just talking with a guest here. She's actually a chef from California, and she actually studied plant plant medicine as in herbal um, herbal herbs and, and actual wild foods used as medicine so that is a good idea that I have to do a bit more research on but I, that's something that we could definitely look into doing maybe I could have a special guest okay so as far as the spiralizing contraption goes all you need to do and I'm not going to go through this for too too much too much exaggeration in time because we've done this several times but the, the the whole vegetable kind of just gets jammed in here where this round holder is Dun, 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 dun. Then these teeth hold the other end and then all we do is we turn, we press and turn, we press and turn and I can't get it to work because there's no handle and I'm a weakling. But you know what I did do is da, 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 made noodles ahead of time. So what happens with the magic of television is the noodles
noodles would come out this side where you see the little teeth and it comes out like this and I have a magic kitchen of elves that do these things for me so that I don't have to do them live on the TV and give my hand purple tunnel <laughs> but that's how this works when they work funk when they actually work properly so this is another great way to get noodles at home but if you don't want to invest in a, in a unit like this you can get these for like 30 bucks now maybe even less sure you can buy them online um, another great a great option to do is if you want to have thicker noodles which we're going to use for one of our upcoming recipes is just grab your vegetable peeler and that's like peel off the outer out the outer edge and then just peel it and you're gonna get, get like nice long thick ribbons of pasta and then if you really want to get a little bit crazy what you can do to make it a bit more like spaghetti is you could take your noodles Pile them up. And then cut them in, then you get smaller noodles, depending on how, how thick you want them. All right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a couple more of these because I am gonna need it for an upcoming recipe. I'll just do that. That'll be enough when we use some of these thinner guys. It's a really great option using a tool that you most likely have at home. I would recommend actually using a U peeler, it's actually just a better tool in general for peeling. Much more control, you can see already. Like look at how much nicer these are. Dun, 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 dun. So if you're ever, if you're ever, if you're ever standing at the store going, which one should I buy? Buy this one, it's just better. Um, but the only reason I have this one out here is because it has another a little um, contraption on the side here, which is like a little grating tooth. You can maybe see it looks like teeth. And what that does is it gives you, Instead of having to do the second step of recutting your bigger noodles into thinner noodles, can you see that? It makes the little noodles all on its own. So that's why I have this, this tool. I really only use it for the small tooth side because the big one's kind of not so great. So those are options. And these, I think I paid like $3 for that. I bought it here. No, I bought it in Canada, I think. No, I think maybe I bought that in Costa Rica. Doesn't matter. So those are your option, options for making veggie noodles as an option. And what I like to do sometimes is not only, you know, use just these vegetable, like the raw vegetable noodles, but sometimes I combine half raw, ve raw vegetable noodles with half cooked pasta noodles, just to sneak in some more vegetables and cut out some of the carbs for clients if they're, you know, a little bit carb wary, which a lot of people are these days. Um, zucchini is a really great substitution for regular spaghetti noodles. Quite often you can sneak that in and some people might not even know that it's the difference, especially with a nice heavy pasta sauce. Uh, but I liked carrots today for the recipe that you're going to see very shortly, and you'll know why I chose carrot. Sound good? Sound good. Let's see what's going on. Anything going on over here? Dun, 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 you can buy zucchini already done for pasta. Yeah. Leonis, uh, Leone saying Toronto says hi. Hey, Toronto. I was there last week. I'm heading back to see you in September. Stay tuned, by the way, for updates, guys. I've got potentially two television appearances and two different TV shows coming up in Toronto in September. Super excited. Just waiting to confirm on some dates with the producers that I'm working with there. That's gonna be super fun. But um, yeah, you can here, in, actually here in Costa Rica, at one of our local supermarkets, um, you can buy pre-spiralized uh, mix, mixed vegetables. You can buy little containers of zucchini, beet, butternut squash, sweet potato, and then there's all they're also selling little mix. So it's like a, you know about a cup of beet, a cup of zucchini, and a cup of carrots. So it's a really beautiful thing to add to any of your salads. Not even, not necessarily just using them as a pasta substitute, but even just putting these beautiful vegetables on your salad makes your salad that look, you know, next level, especially for dinner parties or for kids, because kids are gonna are more apt to eat things that look fun, right? So spiralizing is super killer for that. I think if we can buy them here in Costa Rica, I guarantee you, you go to any, you know grocery store in North America that does, you know, Whole Foods especially, for sure, they probably got pre-spiralized stuff galore. All right, so I'm gonna turn on my little cooktop here so we can get some, get preparing for our first recipe here. So as I mentioned, I have this, this, the, this vegetable, this, rewind. Animal-shaped pasta. <laughs> That was really difficult for me to come up with that sentence just now. But I have this animal shaped pasta because, is this just water? Coconut water. Kenneth is my savior. He brought me coconut water with ice. They didn't even have to ask. Oh, Kenneth, you haven't said hi yet this afternoon. Hi, everybody. Kenneth is there, the, as per usual, behind the camera. The magic fingers. The magic fingers. 
the magic man, my support, my rock. Couldn't do any of this without him. Thank you so much, Kenneth. I love you. Thank you. Love you too. <laughs> um, so this is going to be the start of our sauce for our animal shaped pasta. Growing up, one of my favorite things was macaroni and cheese from in the box. If you know, if you're a kid of the of the 80s, well, what would it be, 60s, 70s, or 80s in North America, you know very well what I'm talking about. The blue box with the fluorescent orange pasta that was cheese flavored. Couldn't get enough. My dad used to make it. I remember very, I remember very well my grandma making that once for me when she was taking care of me and my sisters. And man, did she overcook the pasta. This, the macaroni noodles were like as thick as my finger. But we ate it. And it was super watered down. But I remember the first time I made said pasta. I was super proud. I can't remember how old I was. Probably still in elementary school. But back in my pre-professional chefing days. <laughs> um, I made craft dinner for the fam. Ah, I just brand named it. I, meant I made macaroni and cheese for the family. So I cooked the pasta. I had all the, the pasta boiling away in the water. And I forgot to, I didn't strain the, the water from the pasta. I just added the milk and the butter and the cheese powder. And it ended up being like this super unflavorful pasta soup because I didn't strain any of the water. It was hilarious. My family was like, mm, this is really great. Thanks for cooking dinner. I've learned a lot since then. So I just chopped up here about a half of a medium onion. And this is just going to be a nice flavor base. And in my pot here, I'm adding some olive oil. You could add in butter or ghee or coconut oil or whatever you want to do, just some sort of fat. I'm gonna let that warm up a little bit. And this is like a nice healthy version. There's tons of versions of this out on the internets and in cookbooks. This is a version that I've done once or twice before. I can't remember whose book I got it from uh, or online, but this is just a, a, a jotted down what I remembered from it. So I got my olive oil there. I'm gonna, yeah, that's the sound we're looking for. And I'm just gonna cook this down. This is a, it's a this is like a, gonna be a gluten-free plant-based version, but it's not raw, which is fine. You need to be militant about any types of ways of eating. And I'm just gonna let that cook down a little bit. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt. And while I let that start to cook, it already smells good. Is there anything better than garlic and or onions cooking in some sort of fat? I don't think so. Um, while I'm doing that, I'm going to take about a cup of almond milk or any sort of non-dairy milk. Um, coconut would be a great alternative. I love full-fat coconut milk. It just adds a nice richness. And what I'm going to add to that is about, I don't know, a bit of nutritional yeast. Maybe a half a cup or so. Maybe I'm going to do it in the blender, actually. I'm going to do a couple things in the blender. I'm making this up as I go. So about a cup of almond milk into the blender and I'm going to add in about a quarter cup of the nutritional yeast which is an ingredient I have talked about a million times but if this is your first time watching I will let you know that this is an inactive yeast primarily utilized just for flavoring it is an inactive yeast it's not going to aggravate candida and whatnot, and whatnot. it is actually a nice a source of protein it's a source of a cheesy flavor that's why we typically use it because it does have a it lends to like a blue cheese earthy stinky feet taste and quite often it can have um, um, a, be a source of B vitamins, which is super important if you're following a plant-based diet. Let's give my onions a little stir. And I'm also going to add about three cups of my tomatoes in here because these are this is not pureed tomatoes. This is whole plum tomatoes in in their in their own sauce. So I'm going to actually add that in as well so I can blend it because I don't want big chunks of tomato in my final product. and combine the, the nutritional yeast so it doesn't get clumpy. I'm just gonna add this in to my onions that are cooking. Yum, yum, yum. Then the last little piece de resistance that I'm gonna put in here, which is not really all that exciting, is carrot juice. And that's gonna give us a nice sweetness as well as some orange color. Just like that. I'm just gonna let that cook down a little bit. I would, oh, oh. I breathed in when I took a sip of that. Not recommended, so it went down my, my windpipe a little, but that's delicious sweet carrot juice. 
got to always quality control as we go. So that is it. That's all we need to do here. We could have blended the onions in here. I'm not going to go crazy. And I would let this cook and cook and cook and cook and let it cook down and evaporate a little bit and condense and become more like a cheesy, 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 um, nutritionally yeasty, rich tomato sauce. But we're not going to go too crazy. And what I'm going to do here, what do I want to use? These guys. I forgot. We pre-cooked some animals. By we, I mean my amazing team in the kitchen. So these are our animal striped pasta all cooked up, perfectly al dente. And then we just need to add in some of our delicious red sauce. Yum, yum, yum. Now when I was growing up, I used to eat this canned tomato pasta dish. It was either in animal shapes like this or it was in little O's, spaghetti style O's. If you catch what I'm saying. And it was one of my favorite little things. Um, so this is just a nice more whole food version and again you could substitute this pasta for any sort of gluten-free one that you want You could use that lentil pasta that will give you a nice, a nice um, Plant-based protein lots of fiber to boot and I'm making a mess and there we go. There's your super delicious and healthy you Want to try that Kenneth? You're my forever, forever taste tester. Your spoons in front of you. Oh, we got a rogue elephant now the flavor will be nice, nicely, much more intense as you let it cook down a little bit. And I actually would prefer a lot more sauce than that, but in the nature of my bowl being so tiny, that is your pasta healthy deliciousness. So good. Daniel Kaufman's watching. Denise is saying, hey, Kenneth. Hi, Denise. <laughs> Cheryl's saying, how about some fermentation? So Cheryl, you said she said she, she suggested kombucha. Tune in to last week's video. In the video archive, we made kombucha last week. That was the, it was kombucha gusto. Last week, the whole topic was about kombucha, so we made a fresh batch. And I will let you guys know, if you did watch last week, that I did go and do, go ahead and make a second fermentation of the batch that we made last week. It's, it's well on its way. It will be ready this coming on Tuesday. No, tomorrow. No, Tuesday. Nope. It's one week and then three days. One day and week, three days. So it's going to be ready Tuesday morning. And I've gone and flavored it a bunch of different ways. So maybe next week we'll do a taste test and have people come and sample all the different flavors that I did. I did a strawberry, mandarin orange. I did some plain. did a bunch of flavors. Um, Linda's saying, I love using nutritional yeast, but it becomes it, it becomes MSG in the system. I gave it up. Eh. I love using it because it tastes delicious and I don't use so much that I really, I don't, I'm not concerned about it, but I love, if you're substituting dill and tahini and all of that stuff in there, then that's perfect. As long as it works for you and you feel good about it, that's the most important, important thing. Um, there is a lot of MSG and a lot of ingredients out there that we don't know. Um, it's been, I know a lot of people that are hugely aggravated by MSG and I almost immediately feel the effects of it, like with tingles and headaches and all of that. So it's best to avoid it, obviously, if any sort of food triggers that type of reaction in you. Um, but I don't know wh who t where you got the information about MSG turning into, uh, or sorry, nutritional yeast turning into MSG in the body. But um, I don't tend to go too crazy with what I read in the news or on any of these health websites anymore because there's just so much. There's so much confusion and arguments about what we should and shouldn't eat. I actually just had a conversation yesterday with a guest whose husband is very much a believer about the, the problem of lectins, which if you've read, there's a certain book called, I think The Plant Paradox is the name. I actually saw the author speak last year in New York City and I didn't agree with a lot of his theory. I'm sure there's some science, a lot of scientific basis behind it, but his theory is if you're not like completely overpowering, like nuking essentially your, your beans, in like a power cooker and whatnot, then you're getting you're getting you're ingesting lectins, which are super bad and anti-inflammatory and cancerous and all of that. But then you talk about you talk to raw foodists who are all about don't cook any of your legumes, just soak them and sprout them, and it's super highly nutritional. So there's just I mean, and that's a, an example of the extreme, extreme like the extreme of, of it. It all depends who you talk to and what scientific study they're following or what's you know what they're what food philosophy they were brought up with or that they've studied or that worked for them personally. And so many people form huge you know, belief systems based around one scientific study or what one author said or what one doctor said without you know, really letting in any other information. So I personally, I don't let any one study, unless it's something super, super extreme that you know, has been 100% proven by all people involved, I don't let any of this stuff make me crazy. Nutritional yeast tastes good. It's a great alternative if you can't eat dairy. 
and I use it in small amounts. I'm never eating like cups of it at a time and I don't eat it every day and it makes me really happy. So I enjoy it, just like chocolate cake. That's not gluten free, that's not vegan. It makes me really happy so I eat it every once in a while, I don't eat it every day. And I feel like I'm super perfectly strong and healthy, I'll, you know, because not, not in spite of it or because of it, but because I'm, I am who I am. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> I love you. I love everyone. And I'm, I just say all of this because I think that this is what I'm supposed to be doing in this world right now is just stopping, you know, stopping myself from telling stories around ingredients and food because that my, my, my story is making up stories around food and what's good and what's bad and it's tormented me for 37 years. So I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to be a part of it in, for me anymore. So we're going to, I mean, we were just talking, have we done any fish or chicken on these videos yet? And we haven't. And that isn't because I'm against it, because we serve fish and chicken on the buffet here. We just haven't had the opportunity and haven't chosen a topic that ha includes those ingredients. And I may very soon, who knows? Clearly I'm limited by the space and the equipment that I can use out here, but I'm gonna, I wanna make sure that what we're doing here is inviting for all, without you know shunning anyone, food group or ingredient for that matter. All right, shall we move on to dressing number two? Salad dressing, salad dressing? We're not doing salads, Megan, we're doing pastas. <laughs> 232, I'm tired. Ha. Okay, so moving on to the next thingamahoodie. This is a really simple recipe that I made up a few years ago. I had a client at another um, retreat center ooh, that I was working at, and I think I was doing something like 12 cooking classes with her in like two weeks, so I was like, and it was super last minute, so I was like, I need to come up with content for like 12 on raw vegan cooking classes. So it wasn't even cooking, it was just preparing. Um, so this, I made one that was called Zoodles and Caroodles. And I was using zucchini to make noodles, so I was calling them zoodles, and carrots to make noodles, just like this. So I was calling those Caroodles, which is not a very clever name, but that was the name of my class. And one of the dishes we did was a curried, uh, a sweet curried dressing for, for Caroodles and Zoodles. And this is, the, this is it here today. So I've gone ahead and prepared all the ingredients and I just want to show you that how simple it can be. So I've got, just rinsed out my blender. I'm not going to go crazy with washing it because it's all just plants. This is fresh basil, so I'm going to throw in a handful of basil. Any mixed herbs that you have handy is great. Um, I, I love basil and I'm going to, so this is a super bright and fresh flavor. So I'm going to add in a bit of a grounding, deep, warming winter flavor with some fresh rosemary or romero in espanol. And what is basil? Albahaca. 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 I always spell that wrong. I always get the B's and the H's messed up. I'm sure Kenneth has seen that. Albahaca. Basil. So a little bit of that. I'm gonna add in about two cups of cherry tomatoes. You can see some of these eyes are green here, so they're not gonna be super, super sweet, but that's cool because this is going to be kind of, this is gonna be like a curried dish. And we're gonna add some sweetness with some oranges. And I'm not sure if I've shown you guys the oranges that we get here in Costa Rica, but this is what they look like. And the, what this green is actually pretty ripe. You know, the minute these oranges get much more yellow on the outside, they're almost on the verge of being rotten. They're dead. Yep. So this is a perfectly ripe orange. Look at I just cut into that. Look at how juicy and delicious that is. I actually want to drink some of that. I'm gonna squeeze it somewhere where I can drink a little. I mean, I have to quality control the ingredients after all. So I'm just gonna squeeze a little <sighs> deliciousness. Mm, makes my chin and cheeks pucker. Love it. So I'm gonna squeeze the juice of two of these two. Oh, they're seeds. These are not seedless oranges. But luckily I have this strainer handy. That fits perfectly in the top of my blender. I'm just dumping that in. Hey, bada boom, bada bing. So funny, I'm on delay over there on my computer screen. It always makes me giggle seeing myself like that. I just said it always makes me giggle and I didn't giggle. <laughs> That's a giggle. <laughs> so after this, I have to help clean up a little bit and then I'm going to teach yoga at four o'clock. And I've been talking since I started teaching yoga at seven o'clock this morning. And today, as I mentioned, Sundays are always crazy with people saying goodbye, and new people coming in and I've been talking my, 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 my lips off. So I was wondering, I'm like, how am I gonna possibly talk for 45 minutes doing a Facebook Live? Have I had any trouble so far? Nope. I don't know why I ever think I'm gonna have a problem talking. I'm a pretty good talker. All right, I'm gonna dump that. Let's see if anyone else is saying anything. George Bell is in the house. 
His zizzle. Okay. So what did I do here, guys? Refre let's recap, shall we? Basil, rosemary, tomato, orange juice. Dun, 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 Next thing I'm gonna add in is some tahini, and this is gonna be our fat. This is gonna be what helps ground us down with this raw food dish, and it's also gonna be what helps um, the sauce coat the noodles, because you need something to help bind the sauce to the noodles, so I'm gonna add in some tahini. Yummy, yum, yum. Yeah, I'll take one of those spoons. Hit me. A little bit of tahini. And then I've got um, some salt here. I'm gonna put in a pinch of salt, always. Ooh, the wind's catching that. And then I've got some spices here, and I've got cumin, comino, in Espanol, ground turmeric root, curcuma, and curry powder, curry powder, <laughs> curry, curry in polvo. And I'm gonna, it's a lot, but I like it. Curry, I like it potent. That's just me. And that's all there is to it, my friends. And then we're gonna just toss that onto the blender. Plug your ears. combination of our caroodles and our lentil noodles. Combine that all up and then add in some of our beautiful dressing. Coat it up real nice. Now we could let this sit and serve it just and, and then bring it. This would be a great little picnic dish. Cold pasta salad. Doesn't that look lovely? And then take that. So yummy, fresh, light. Look at that. Someone just stepped on a dog. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? <laughs> okay, perfect. A bada boom, bada bing. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do a little, as I have this here, I'm gonna just take a little bit of green onion. on top you know what would be really good on this some toasted sesame seeds or because we have the tahini in there fresh cilantro some toasted cashews would be really good and that my friends is our curried caroodles and lentil noodles easy peasy what up? I just got a little photo photo op you know how I'm a, my, I'm a he's a, what's your name Henry. Henry. Henry says he's been watching for weeks, so he's excited to see me live here. This is why we love these videos. That's why we do it. Welcome. So you guys can see here, um, when Kenneth is done showing off that, I've really been cooking down. Wow, Kenneth, that is some badass camera work. Look at how good that looks. He's a professional. Like, I'm going to turn that actually off because look at, look at this. Look at how thick. This has just been cooking away. Yes, this is what we need. This is what we want. This is the texture of the sauce that we want. Super thick, cooked down, evaporated, a lot of the liquid out. So it's gonna be a lot more intense in flavor. The onions have had a bit of a chance to cook down. I'm gonna put that on for you, Kenneth, a little bit later. So you can enjoy that later. Perfect, yeah. Okay, so one more dish. Ugh, this is like spoof spewing everywhere. So this last dish is not really a pasta, like it's a, it's more like another pasta salad. I'm just gonna toss up, chop up some of these onions, some green onions. What I've got here is some cauliflower. So I'm just, I'm, I've got the kitchen that got me to prepare this. I'm gonna just do it in a little bit smaller pieces. florets this is raw you could give it a light steam if you want but I'm keeping up the, the raw essence appeal here so I'm not gonna go too crazy with that that's enough so this is two of our components the main component second second to main component is wakame so this is a seaweed 
And this is just something that I've had soaking, like literally right before we went live, I just soaked this in some water. I'm gonna just drain out the water. Just regular old tap water or filtered water. And what this seaweed looks like before you soak it is like that. So you buy it in little bags, it's called wakame. And this is one of the seaweeds that I like to use the most because it doesn't take a lot of time to prep. A lot of other seaweeds you gotta cook for a long time or soak for a long time. This one literally soaks nicely in like 10 minutes. Wakame. So I've soaked that up and I've strained it out. You might even want to give it a little squeeze to get any excess water out because it absorbs a lot. I mean, the more water that remains in your pasta and in, and in any other ingredient like this, the more it's going to water down your dressing. So we don't want that. So I'm just squeezing that out. And the other, so for the other pasta noodle, these are almost like little noodles in themselves. So it's not a far reach <laughs> for me to be using the, utilizing this in, in my oodles of noodles class today but we are gonna add some other carrot noodles and these are this is our noodle component look at how tight the spiral is how cute is that Yoink. oh that's because there was two together there we go this makes me happy these things this makes me joyous spirals of carrots makes me joyous things things like that really make me joyous and light me up in life simple 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 pleasures okay so here I got my wakame and my carrots and I'm gonna to toss in this cauliflower and green onion that I've just sliced up I'm gonna add in the juice of a lime it's gonna be the acid component of our dish and the nice part about this noodle dish I'm gonna add uh, this whole one is it's you just toss it all in a bowl you're not we're not utilizing any sort of cooking utensils or dirtying any pots and pans then I've got here agave syrup you could use maple syrup or honey but I'm keeping it um, fully vegan here and in this little cup I've got soy sauce and sesame oil mmm que rico super super delicious and then we pass me the curry tongs are fine I'm not gonna go too much be too upset about mixing in my curry and then that's it you could add in some red peppers or, or any other sort of um, vegetable you want to add a red cabbage would be really nice shaved into this um, but this is a really nice Asian style cold salad really nice to be served with alongside some sushi or a, like a teriyaki fish or something like that um, toasted sesame seeds on top would be really good or toasted cashews just like I mentioned with the curry finishing this off with some fresh parsley or cilantro would be really good um, but just another really great alternative to your traditional old pasta or noodle dish and this is another really great one for packing for picnics so there's still a few months left in the summer um, up, if, up in the northern hemisphere so this is a really great option for people for another type of pasta so what look at that we've got four different pastas here they're not the prettiest today definitely not the zoodles here let me put this in a different bowl so we can present oh yeah our plate good call a little bit more of this dressing so yummy. Pasta. So good. Look at that. Four pastas whipped up in under 40 minutes. Not too shabby. All it takes is a little bit of hot water to boil your noodles. If you wanted to just substitute in all raw vegetables, spiralized and or couscous, it would save you a lot of time. But when I mean, another thing you can do is cook a bunch of these pastas ahead of time, like on the weekend. We've talked about a lot about batch cooking, but you can cook your quinoa pasta, your red lentil pasta, till just al dente, and then soak, put it, um, rinse it under lots of really cold water, and then store it in a Tupperware container, like a glass Tupperware container in your fridge with a bit of olive oil, and then just you can reheat it uh, just by running hot water over it to be utilized in any of these dishes. Or if you're going to serve it cold, just let it be. All right, what do you think? Are you guys happy? Kenneth, are you happy? Super happy. Kenneth is super happy. Because I know the end. <laughs> this is my This is Kenneth's lunch. lunch. He knows how this ends. He knows how this story ends. Miranda's saying she loves my um, the impromptu Spanish lesson. I should do that more, I think. Talk more in Spanish, teach you guys more. Dale is saying I miss the green goddess salad dressing you make. The recipe is obviously a healthier version of the stuff I'm finding online. Yes, Dale, message me and I can send you that recipe. Um, so guys, let's have a quick gander what's going on next week. Da, 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 da. Today is the 19th, so that makes next Sunday will be the 26th. All things avocado. If you've been watching for the last few months, I've been promoting that one. I keep shifting the dates around. Next week, 100% certain it'll be all things avocado, unless for some reason I can't get enough ripe avocados. 
which is possible. Um, so we're gonna do sweet and savory aguacate, and then I think after that we'll be off offline for a bit. Um, but I will confirm with you guys next week. In the meantime, enjoy this beautiful week, second last week of August already. What? 2018 is flying by. Kenneth and I are super grateful to have you guys viewing every week. Please share these videos to anyone that you think might um, appreciate what we have, what I have to say. Um, my, not only mine, but Dr. Jeff's and, and Jerry's and Christian's. You know, share them alike. We want to get the, the word out there of what we're doing here at Rhythmia so we can continue to heal the world one soul at a time with all of your help. So, on that note, hasta luego, hasta mañana, hasta próxima semana, hasta próximo domingo. We love you so much. Con mucho gusto. It's such a pleasure. Ciao, ciao.